As you're probably aware, Valve have already announced the successor to the Valve Index, the Steam Frame. And for VR pilots out there, one of the most interesting aspects undoubtedly is the introduction of a new technology, foveated streaming. Now the Steam Frame's not out until probably end of the first quarter, early second quarter 2026, but we're still able to test this technology using a beta version of the Steam Link application and the Play for Dreams MR headset. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to put foveated streaming to the test. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. What you're watching right now is foveated streaming in action. You may notice from time to time a little bit of shaking in the video. That's due to the hazards of recording in VR, not necessarily visible in the actual VR headset itself. So what exactly is foveated streaming? Well, it takes a little while to get your head round it. The more traditional method of foveated rendering uses two or more different resolutions being displayed in the headset simultaneously with where you're looking more in the center being the highest resolution and lower resolutions on the periphery of your view. The location and size of the lower resolution images reduces the amount of data required to be transferred to the headset, making both encoding and in particular decoding quicker, thus improving frame rates. Foveated streaming on the other hand takes a completely different approach whilst maintaining the same objective. Foveated streaming varies the bitrate that is transferred to the headset, with the highest bitrate being based either in the center or where you're looking, thus ensuring that the quality of the image that you're actually looking at is the best it can be for your system, subject of course to the settings that you're using. This can significantly reduce but not necessarily eliminate all of the compression in the data transfer, resulting in a sharper, clearer image, again system dependent, reducing or eliminating the impact of artifact. By lowering the overall load on your system, this in turn may leave you a bit of headroom to push up those resolutions or tweak those settings. For wireless headsets, I'm a big fan of virtual desktop and one can't help but to draw some comparison. In this particular example that you're looking at on screen, if I was in the Quest 3, I'd be in godlike mode with a resolution of 3072 by 3216 or in monster mode in the Plate for Dreams MR at 3840 by 3552. Steam Link obviously uses Steam VR, and I'm currently using 5208 by 4816, a considerably higher resolution without necessarily a penalty in performance. The end result is a cleaner, crisper, and sharper image that, in my personal opinion, to all intents and purposes, rivals both the clarity and image quality you get with the traditional display port connection, but with the benefit, of course, of being wireless. Now, I'm not a technical boffin, I'm afraid, so my explanation here may not be 100% technically correct, but I'm sure you get the drift. Foveated streaming provides the potential to improve the quality that you can experience in a wireless headset. And if you follow my channel at all, you'll be well aware that I'm a big advocate, particularly when using my motion simulator, of being free of those cables. It may also, and again a personal opinion, be indicative of the direction of travel for VR for the future. Currently using Steam Link 2, which as I mentioned earlier is in beta, there will almost undoubtedly be a number of updates to this coming from Valve prior to the release of the Steam Frame itself. Now I acknowledge I'm using a high resolution OLED VR headset to play for Dreams MR, but the performance I'm experiencing is very good indeed and the images are as good as I've experienced on any DisplayPort VR headset in the past. Not blowing it out of proportion, but I am genuinely amazed and impressed. There are a number of limitations to the test today. Firstly and significantly, the eye tracking is not functional. The Steam Link is not natively supported by the Play for Dreams MR headset until a further update sometime in January. An installation is largely a manual process. Steam Link, like Virtual Desktop itself, does have a number of requirements. You're going to need a fair amount of PC grunt, as well as a fairly hefty and stable internet connection. I've already done a video on the announcement of the Steam Frame and covered off various aspects. And if you watch that video, you'll recall that I had the following to say.
And over the last couple of days, I have been testing Steam Link 2 in the Play for Dreams MR and doing a brief comparison to Virtual Desktop. I have to say, from a personal point of view, I wasn't really able to determine a significant difference, but we'll only be able to judge it properly once Steam Link 2 is officially released in its final format. So for me at this time, the jury is still out on this one. Well, the jury is no longer out. Getting Steam Link up and running on the Play for Dreams MR involves a number of manual changes to configuration file as well as settings, and simply put, I got some of them wrong. The reason I couldn't see a difference was because I wasn't using foveated streaming. After having watched a number of other reviews, including VR Flight Sim Guy, well, I knew I'd got something wrong, so it was back to the Discord. A massive thanks out to Vol for his guidance and providing a step-by-step -step installation guide. Just to touch on the Play for Dream menu, as you can see Steam Link is loaded, you have to sideload an APK, then jumping to our settings. If you are thinking of trying Steam Link 2, make sure you complete all firmware upgrades. That's critically important. Also under the Display Settings and the Advanced tab, make sure not only do you select 4K, but also the full rendering mode. And once you select this mode, if you then go to the Lab setting, you'll find both an FOV and sharpening option. And it's this sharpening option that further improved the visibility and clarity within the sim. I set mine to 60 under fast mode. Recommended. There's no getting away from the fact that the Play for Dreams MR headset is expensive, primarily due to its 4K Par I OLED lenses and panels. But what it does do is really show off foveated streaming to best effect. I'll be interested to further test this once native support allows for eye tracking to see how it performs. If you're interested in getting your hands on this, there's an affiliate link down below that offers a 50 US dollar discount. Just note that current demand is fairly high, so deliveries will be first quarter 2026. Check out their website for more details. Being an OLED headset, of course, we had to test it at night, and again, I must say, I was very impressed indeed. Although color banding was visible in the greys, my color settings in the Play for Dream MR headset are at default, and they are particularly noticeable, but you can adjust the color settings once again, guidance on the Play for Dream MR Discord, which reduces it considerably to a point where it really wasn't an issue for me at all. I must say, the nighttime visuals are stunning in their own right. Now, the Steam Frame VR headset itself only has a resolution of 2160 by 2160, which in itself is fairly disappointing. But combine that with the foveated streaming, and particularly so if you're coupled to a fairly beefy PC, well, let's just say I don't think you're going to struggle very hard for performance. I wouldn't be overly surprised if it didn't replace the HP Reverb G2 as the flight sim staple. The obvious downside for me, of course, is that in its default state, it's just not built for MR capability for those that would want that, due to its monochrome cameras. But I do believe this in itself is an exciting technology, and who knows what the next step will be, and where it will take us VR Pilot. Does all this mean that Virtual Desktop is dead and buried? No, far from it. Virtual Desktop encapsulates the MR capability. It has SSW as the performance enhancer or frame generator, which is a massive boon for many VR pilots, something that Steam Link just doesn't have. And no doubt the Virtual Desktop guys will be hard at work to see what more they can bring. Will they bring foveated streaming to Virtual Desktop? Well, I'm not sure about that but time will tell. I've said it before, I'll say it again, what an exciting time to be in Flight Sim. Thank you as always for joining me, I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon, and ciao for now, Captains.